Nice. Yeah, so so hello everyone. Um, um, today we're going to talk about Apache Submarine, um, which is a unified machine learning platform. Um, my name is Wanda Tan, and we have a, a cloud speaker, Jan Kun Tang. So both of us um, are from Cloudera. So today, Jan Kun cannot join in person. Uh, he is in, in China, which is a really bad time zone um, um, for today's slot. Um, so he recorded a demo and I will play the demo later. So let's get started. So this is agenda today. So first we're going to talk about machine learning in production and requirements. And then we will talk about what is summary and what's the problem of summary trying to solve. We'll go through the feature highlights of summary. And we also talk about the summary community and the release plans. So first, let's say the machine learning in production. So if you check some um, tutorials then on the TensorFlow or other website, um, you can see it's it's fairly simple. You import import a TensorFlow and you um, create uh, uh, some 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 constants or um, a vertex and you multiply them. Yeah, and and you feel like you are learning a lot of things. You are already uh, master in machine learning. And if you search YouTube, you can see a lot of tutorials like handwritten character image classifier in 40 nights, uh, build an image classifier in 30 nights, and you can predict Apple stock in 40 nights, and things like that. So sometimes you will feel very excited because machine learning sounds very simple. However, uh, sometimes you will feel, is that true? This sounds too oversimplified. So if you look at the machine learning um, um, training life cycle, so this, this picture is showing everywhere. I don't want to repeat too much. So basically what uh, this says is the code you, you want to write for the machine learning is just a very tiny part of your whole, train, um, whole machine learning training and, um, and uh, whole machine learning life cycle. Uh, there are lots of things you have to build around that in order to make machine learning useful. So uh, if you look at the uh, typical data pipeline for machine learning, uh, you will see the data first is come from some edge, like some, some, uh, some sensors, or this also can come from some uh, click log of the website. And everything will be landed in a data lake. Um, and the data scientist can use tools like uh, Zeppelin or Jupyter or other things like Tableau to explore the data and trying to get the sense of the data. Once they have some understanding of the data, they can run some ETL applications like, uh, like join, like uh, sampling, feature extraction, and typically they, they will use tools like Spark or Hive. And once they get the data, they can do the model training, and they can typically use uh, things like TensorFlow or PyTorch to do the model training. And once the training is done, the model will be saved in some storage, and later you can deploy this model in production. And so once you visit a bank, once you want to get a loan from a bank, um, and your risk number will be, will be predicted by the, by the uh, machine learning models. So for the data scientist, so let's try to define what is data scientist and what they want to, um, uh, they want to expect from the, pro, um, from the product. Um, so we have talked to many data scientists and typically they are experts of machine learning algorithms. And they are very familiar with models and libraries to build these models and feature engineering, right? They need tools and platforms to gain insight of the data and they want to build models um, uh, very efficiently. And they also want to create ML pipeline, uh, so which I just mentioned before, like data labeling, transformation like that, uh, very easily. They are mostly familiar with uh, the tools like Python, Spark, or uh, some of them familiar with Hive. They are not very familiar with platform stuff. 
So what they will expect? So for the uh, model exploration, uh, they typically use pre-processed using Spark or Hive, or sometimes they will use Pandas, uh, which is some smaller scale alternatives. And they will use experiment to use sample data set. Right? And they uh, will, uh, will do the experiment with a full data set once they get some confidence. And typically, they need a distributed algorithm or they need to run the uh, single node application in a faster, faster resources to run. And they need to make sure that the experiment can be easier um, um, reproducible. They can record parameters, code, and metrics of ex ex experiment. And they want to manage their uh, dependency easier. They want to really code in once and run everywhere. Uh, they also want to make the parameters can be easier to tune. Um, um, and they can use uh, tools like AutoML. Right? They also want to very easy to manage the models to uh, easier to push the models to production. And also they want to uh, do the model assurance, monitoring, like that. So what they don't expect to know so we also talked to a lot of um, data scientists. They really uh, lack of understanding of resource management concepts like YARN or Kubernetes. Right? If you ask them to troubleshooting uh, why application cannot start it on YARN or Kubernetes, they cannot figure it out. They also, um, many of them are not familiar with tuning compute engine um, uh, in some uh, deeper, deeper fine tuning. Uh, such as tuning the memory configuration or shuffle performance of a Spark job. So what they really want to, to have is some working compute engine. They, they are not really worried about the performance. They just want to make it working, make it runnable and not fail. So they don't like any nitty gritty details of underlying infra. It should just work. So what is Apache Summary? So summary, um, but definition, we want to uh, say it's a uh, one platform to allow data scientists to create end-to-end uh, -end machine learning workflow. So when we say it's a uh, one platform, means we want to. Mm, not sure if audio will start. I don't know if there's a way to do something like that. Um, so, so I just want to confirm um, what's on the nine. And you can hear me, right? Okay, sounds good. Uh, yeah, basically what we want to have is um, we can do the do the um, um, have a single platform to allow data scientists to exploring data pipeline, model training, tooling, push model to production in the same platform. So what Summary can do? So later we will show a, a, a demo from Jan Kun about all these things, but I want to introduce about this um, and this for now to make sure you understand uh, how this feature work. So first is we can very easy to install summary. A single Helm command can install everything needed for summary on a Kubernetes cluster. And when we do the experiment, which is a model training, uh, we have very nice Python SDK and API uh, to submit and manage experiment. So currently we support um, PyTorch and TensorFlow. So for the notebook, we have managed uh, Jupyter notebook service to allow multi-user to share the same environment. And also we have a first class environment um, concept to allow a uh, user to manage their Docker and Conda environment easier. So um, basically we don't want your data scientists get into trouble with building their own Docker image or handle their Conda dependencies like that. We want to make uh, our environment can be easier share uh, within the team and to other other uh, members of the team. Also, we have Git integration for experiment and notebook, um, which you can easier download the code directly from uh, from from uh, your private Git repo or GitHub. So uh, that can help you to do the training easier. Um, for the more things like model and metrics management. This part is is uh, is in planning, uh, but we our plan is to finish the first of four bucket uh, first in a nicer way, and then we can move to the model and metrics management. 
So here's the features of Submarine. So using one command, you can install Helm install Submarine, can install the Submarine on, on existing Kubernetes. And um, user can go to a notebook page to create a notebook, uh, choose an environment, and uh, you can get your notebook running in the cluster, and you can um, submit your applications um, in the notebook. We also have training support. Uh, we have um, Python SDK. You can create an environment here. You choose what is the environment, which is a um, Docker and Alaconda dependencies. You choose um, where is your training code located. So this training code is located in S3. And you specify the parameters uh, to, to, train the, to train your model, and specify some um, parameters, and also input output uh, location. So this application, once we call the experiment.run uh, and run this Python script, this can um, run, submit this job to, the, to your um, distributed cluster like a Kubernetes and run this without user understanding there's anything running. Um, and so, so it is running on Kubernetes or not. So user doesn't worry about that, doesn't care about, um, about that. So we also have UI support. So later we're going to show a real demo for this. And uh, for the environment profile, um, for the data scientists or the um, the model um, model engineers, they can um, create an environment like let's put a name like my submarine environment, specify a base Docker image, and what is the Alaconda kernel to use? Uh, you put a kernel name what is the channel and what is the dependencies here. And when you um, want to use the environment in your experiment, you can just refer the, the name of my submarine environment as an environment parameter and submit your application to submarine. So submarine can uh, automatically download the Docker image for you and set up the Alaconda dependencies for you. So user don't need to worry about all these dependencies. And this can be also used in in notebook, uh, so uh, all the things can be shared. So for the um, uh, training support, we uh, have the Git repo integration. Um, a way um, a user can, um, so there are several ways you can um, get your training code in um, and training code into your uh, application uh, when you're running applications on Kubernetes. So first option is to patch the code into a Docker image. So the downside is very difficult for data scientists. Uh, they have, uh, they, they will be pretty struggled to figure out how to build a Docker image themselves uh, in a right way. And second option is, is to mount a volume like a NFS to a jar. So the downside is um, a lot of data scientists, they just change their code on the disk frequently so it's very hard to trace back when this change happens. So what we suggest the user to do is to use a gate integration. Uh, when you run your experiment, you specify a sync mode to say gate, specify a URL, and this will be submitted. Um, and so when the job is submitted to Kubernetes, uh, the gate will be automatically checked out um, by summary and put this to the slash code. So you can just refer your training code under the slash code. So here uh, we're going to show a demo from Jenkin. So um, let me make this time run faster. OK, so, so here's a demo. Um, we, this is a login page of summary. And um, so uh, we can, uh, user can log in here using their own credentials. And like we mentioned, we can use the um, um, uh, Docker desktop Kubernetes to install Submarine and use the him install to install the Submarine in one single command. After uh, maybe two minutes, you can get this up, up and running. And this is a, a dashboard um, of your Submarine. You can see the resources available in the cluster and you can, uh, how many GPUs and uh, CPUs like that. And you can see the notebook, experiments, and the environment. You can manage the resources here. Right. 
So let's go to the um, uh, let's go to the environment first. So in the environment, you can see there are a list of environments, and you have a Docker image here, and you have a what Python dependencies here. You can also create a, your own environment, put a name, put a um, Docker image name, and you you can add some other dependencies. So once this is created, this can be shared um, across different team members. So let's go to experiment and try to run some experiment. So currently there's no experiment running and you create an experiment. First, you can uh, define your own experiment and you can put a name um, and, and put what is the command to use. So here is a very simple minist command to with some parameters and put what is the image for this experiment. So here's also some um, advanced options you can put like what's namespace to use, but should, people should not care. So the second step is to choose your training job type. Here is a distributed TensorFlow or distributed PyTorch or standalone script. Right? So for here, we are running a distributed TensorFlow job. So we choose the distributed TensorFlow and we have one worker, uh, how many memories here, and we can add a parameter server here with some memory definition. For the next step, we can review the training job. Uh, here's the command line we are going to use. And here's the image of the Docker image. And we can see we have one worker and one parameter server. It's a very simple distributed TensorFlow application. And so uh, once you make sure this is right, uh, we, can, we can create um, submit. And this will be submitted to the, um, the Kubernetes cluster running in the back. You can see that status is um, is accepted, and um, if you want to um, to retrain your job, uh, you can click a clone, and you can change some of the parameters you have, mm -hmm. and you can um, resubmit this again. So this can help you to um, to run jobs with different setup uh, easier. So we can see this is running, and if you click output, you can see the output of the of the um, training job. Right. There's also metrics. Uh, if there's any metrics data here, it will be showing here um, uh, in the metrics. So let's. Uh, um, yeah. So so here we we go to the notebook. So here we have two notebooks running, um, and also we can create new notebooks for you. Uh, you can create a notebook with a name. Choose an environment which we pre and defined, choose how many CPUs and the memories. And once you click create, this will be submitted to the Kubernetes cluster and it will be up and running. So let's go to one of the running uh, Jupyter Notebook. So uh, let's first show some summary SDK example. So in the SDK example, we first will input some of the um, summary SDK objects to the notebook and we create uh, and client and here we specify so like we we mentioned before we will specify an uh, environment spec and what is the environment to use and what is the name name space is a tensorflow or pytorch what is the command night command night to use uh, we we create one worker here one parameter server here and we will specify what is the uh, code spec here it's 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 from um, John Quinn's GitHub repo. And once we define everything, we create an experiment spec, which included all these items. Right. And, and once this is done, we can call the summary client, create the experiment, and this can, um, can be submitted. So we can see this application is accepted. So uh, we can also use the environment uh, experiment APIs to list the experiment to say what is the status for now. Right? And if we call the wait for finish, this will just wait here and it will show in the, it, it will stream in the output of the applications to the, to the notebook and we can get what's the status here. And if we want to get the log, we can also get the log from, from, the, from the SDK itself. And once we 
don't need this uh, experiment anymore. We can delete. We can delete the experiment. So if we go back to the experiment, we can also say the new experiment we just submitted from notebook is list is listed in the UI. Right. The user can uh, easier track what is the experiment they have run, and they can track the uh, status of each experiment. They can also in the future we plan to add the support. Uh, to uh, get the metrics and get the uh, get the model can be downloaded from each experiment. So the other example is the is a predefined template, but because of the time limits today, so let's skip this one. Um, yeah, so so that's pretty much for the demo, and let's go back to the presentation. So what is the relationship of submarine with other open source projects? Uh, so first of all, we are not trying to reinvent of wells. We are building on, on top of other open source projects. Uh, so here's a, a model we are reusing other open source projects. So for the environment profile management, we are using Docker and Conda. And for the notebook, we are using Jupyter. And for the, uh, when we run the experiment on Yarn, we're using TensorFlow on Yarn, which is from LinkedIn. And when we run experiments on Kubernetes, we use uh, Kubeflow's TF job and PyTorch job. So our focus is not to replicate all these underlying platform um, platform um, uh, layer. And we, uh, what uh, our focus is to provide a better API and UI support for data scientists and the machine learning engineers. So for the submarine community, um, so currently we have a pretty diversified community. Um, we uh, we have uh, committers and contributors from LinkedIn, Facebook, Caldera, Alibaba, NetEase, and we have many um, contributors from many other companies. Currently, we have 36 code contributors, uh, which have uh, any code merged in the, in the community, which is um, grow from 18 uh, at the be um, um, beginning of 2020. So, uh, for the releases, um, for the last release is 0.4 release, um, which supports deploy submarine server on Kubernetes. And this can also run um, single node distributed uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch on Kubernetes. The ongoing release uh, will, uh, is 0.5, which will target, um, yeah, so, so this, this is September to October, but it's already October. It's almost October now. So we we, are, we should be able to get this uh, released um, sometime in middle or late October. So what we demoed here in the uh, notebook support, environment profile, UIs, this is, will be all included in the 0 0.5 release. So for, uh, for the next, we plan to have a 0 0.6 release to enhance the, um, the, the part um, for the better user, user experiences. And post 0 0.6, we are looking at the plan to do a GA. So probably for the GA plan will be um, uh, 45 months from now. So we have a bunch of community use cases. Um, for example, NetEase is, uh, is, is one of the largest online gaming news and music provider in China. So they are running, yar, uh, running summary on YAR on two 45 GPU, uh, GPU nodes uh, clustered. So uh, on the submarine, they are building one of the uh, uh, major music recommendation model, which is invoked uh, more than 1 billion times a day. And for the LinkedIn, they are running uh, summary on 255 GPU machines, and they're also running on YARN. They, are, they have 500 TensorFlow training per day, and this is a uh, data um, um, a while back, probably nine months back. And they are service applications in recommendation systems and NLP. They collaborate with us on runtime and SDK development intensively. And there's another company, Kurt.com. So they recently listed in Nasdaq. So it is the largest online real estate brokerage website in China. They have 50 uh, GPU machines, and it is based on Hadoop trunk. So as they are serve applications like image and the voice recognition. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much for the demo. And so 
here's our website and here is a GitHub. So uh, if you have interest in to try summary and trying to join this community, uh, you will be always welcome. And here are all the um, major contributors to this presentation and to this project. And there are a lot more we haven't listed here, and yet we have lots of people help to push the community forward. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to ask. So I think question will be asked in the chat, right? So any questions? Yeah, so, so I will be stay here for um, another five minutes. And so if you have any questions, feel free to um, post in the um, in the event, event uh, in, in a session chat. Okay, so the first question is a lot of documents refer to Jupyter. Uh, their plans to include Apache sibling as well. So yeah, this is a uh, this is a good question. So actually, initially we are looking at Zeppelin uh, rather than Jupyter, uh, but later we found the uh, Jupyter has very good integration for um, data scientist tools, and uh, um, and Zeppelin in compared to that has very good integration to Spark and other data engineering and, and engineering um, and like Flink as well. So yeah, so I think um, to, to, to your question, Dave, so um, there is a plan to look into Apache Zeppelin in the future, um, but we want to focus on give, the, um, and give a useful notebook experiences to the users first before we ex exploring other uh, notebook, uh, notebook uh, projects. Yeah, thank you, Phoenix. Any questions, feel free to type in the chat. Yeah, so I think there's one, there's one thing um, I actually skipped. Um, maybe I can, I can show this to you. Um, um, so there's a concept we are building right now. It's called the predefined, it's called predefined experiment template. Um, yeah, so feel free to give your feedback for that. Um, so for the, um, for the normal training support, uh, when the user wants to run their application, they will have to figure out what is their, um, where is their training script located, how many, how how much memory CPU to to use, and what is the, their um, their environment like the Docker image or Python dependencies to use. So that is still very trivial for data scientists to, to specify, and it is it is not error proof. It's very easy to. Uh, specify some errors in the in the um, uh, in the training, and the job could fail, and they have to rerun this again and again to figure out why. So one thing we are currently building is called predefined template. Uh, this is probably a bit too late for the um, zero point five, but we are targeting this, retargeting this to zero point six. So what in the in the predefined template is it is just a normal script, but we only allow user to change some of these parameters, like where is the input data located and where is the output data located. And there are some training parameters. You specify um, uh, this is, for example, a deep FM CTR training, and you submit this JSON, JSON, JSON file with these parameters to Submarine. And Submarine can, can fill 
the deep FM CTR applications uh, to run. So you don't have to worry about where is this code located. You don't have to worry about where is this, uh, how, how much resource to use. Um, so this can be very easy to tune by, by the data scientist. Um, so yeah, so, so this is something we are, we are also building right now. Okay, so if there's no more questions, we can probably end this um, end this um, session. If you have any other questions, feel free to um, send an email to submarine um, at Apache um, email list or drop me some um, email like that or, or ping me on the chat. Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. <laughs>